Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. Well, so far on Musicals 101, we've done something old and something new, so how about something that's kind of a bit of both? Something that, through its various incarnations, has struggled to find a mainstream audience, but those who are familiar with it adore it, in no small part because of one amazingly epic score. Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Even now, the title still sounds like the punchline to a joke about the House of Mouse's habit of attempting to fit everything they do into their family-friendly, easily marketable mode. And while there is some of that going on here, Hunchback represents some of the darkest, most complex work of the 90s Renaissance. Institutional racism, corrupt authority, religious hypocrisy, sexual repression, a protagonist who has to learn that being a nice guy is no guarantee you'll get the girl, a narrator who is theoretically on the side of the angels but does try to lynch the male leads, and oh yeah, that seriously terrifying villain song. So, give Disney credit for not shying completely away from the harsher aspects of Victor Hugo's novel. In fact, the evolution of their hunchback from animated film to live-action stage musical has only allowed them to embrace the source material's tragic and morally ambiguous nature even further. But more on that later, let's start at the beginning with the animated film and its single strongest aspect, Alan Menken and Stephen Schwartz's magnificent music. From the first, Mencken and Schwartz's work for Hunchback was remarkably theatrical in its scope and style. The opening number, Bells of Notre Dame, immediately sets the scene in every possible sense of the term, with its soaring, ominous choral motif and a gripping narrative structure. It establishes the movie's backstory in an incredibly effective and unforgettable manner. And for one time in his life, a power and control. Frollo felt a twinge of fear for his immortal soul. What must I do? The majority of the songs approach or match Bells of Notre Dame for power and dramatic drive, but the underscore is truly where Hunchback excels. Menken draws on the cathedral setting using pipe organ, liturgical chorals, and, of course, bells, to create a soundscape of astonishing impact. The climactic track Sanctuary is probably my favorite piece of Disney underscore. It just blows you away with its thundering chords and relentless ascent towards the novel's iconic scene. I think that's probably why I've never really liked a guy like you. It doesn't feel like it belongs in this score. Everything surrounding it is grand and elegant and powerful. And then you have this little upbeat comical cabaret number. It's like putting a mime in the middle of a cathedral. It just doesn't fit the mood. Paris, the city of lovers is glowing this evening. (sighs) True, that's because it's on fire. But still, there's l'amour. I wonder if the creators of Disney's Hunchback wanted to hew closer to Hugo's original, but were compelled to lighten things up a bit to make it fit with the studio's established brand? That would explain why the stage adaptations got progressively darker, first in Berlin and then in the United States. The American version makes two particular changes that affect the tenor of the story. First, it restores Quasimodo's difficulty hearing, which gives his songs a new resonance as they represent the thoughts and feelings that he is incapable of articulating to others. Michael Arden, who played the title character in both the La Jolla and Paper Mill productions, creates a strong distinction between Quasimodo's internal and external selves. It's nice, the two of us sitting. The two of us sitting. The two of you sing, sing on top of the world. Second, it jettisons.
christens the trio of comic gargoyles in the form of a kind of Greek chorus comprised of Notre Dame's statuary and bells. Unlike the film's sidekicks, whose nature was kind of up in the air, these are pretty explicitly the voices inside Quasimodo's head, a fact which contributes to the tragedy of his isolation and his hopeless devotion to Esmeralda. Though it must be a clue made with guile and art. And she gave it to you because she knows you're smart. Think, Quasimodo. Is it hopeless? Or can you see in it something you've seen before? As with the film, Mencken and Schwartz draw heavily on liturgical motifs, creating some brilliant dramatic resonance. Esmeralda's God Help the Outcasts is now preceded by a Salve Regina, a prayer to the Virgin Mary that parallels the sentiments expressed by Esmeralda in the song. This elevates and affirms the character's spirituality, defying the virgin whore dichotomy that Frollo is determined to judge her by. Unfortunately, no plans exist for a Broadway production of Hunchback of Notre Dame at this time, but the cast recording from Ghost Light is amazing, and I expect we'll see more regional productions of the piece in years to come. So keep your eyes open and make some room on your playlist for a musical that's even better than you remember. I'm Diva, I know the score, and now, so do you. (laughs) 